so I'm doing one of my cool making art videos, and this time I'm in front of the camera. Ah! Oh, wait, yes, I have to do the things, because this is a video on YouTube. Hi, I'm Amanda Call, and this is my channel where I do lots of art videos. Uh, usually it's just a camera on the thing that I'm drawing and not my face. Uh, but I do this on occasion too, so that I can share my knowledge with you. So if you like these videos of either me drawing stuff or me explaining how to make artwork type stuff, then you should subscribe to this channel, like the video, and share it with people on whatever social media platforms, because I would love to share my information with more people if I possibly can. So, uh, one of my favorite things that I like to make and sell at conventions is mini-comics. But basically, it's a tiny little comic, like this. Uh, you print it at home or just at your local print shop and you put them together yourself and it's usually either just like a short story or the ones that I do every year is I do a different sketchbook and usually I do these at the beginning of the comic convention season which didn't happen this year. So uh, normally I'm doing these in like March and now it's August and I'm finally putting together my 2019-2020 sketchbook. I decided that I wanted to put these together and send them out to my patrons on Patreon and just have them available in case anybody wants to buy them, if they just want to like buy them from me directly, like uh, over email, I guess. Everything's awful. I wanted to go over the basic process of how I make these at home and how you can make them home at too. Your local print shop would love the business right now, so please ask them about helping you out with this process. How do we go from a bunch of random stuff in my actual physical sketchbook to my lovely little sketchbook mini comic. That's what I'm going to show you now. First things first, you're going to want to look through your source material and figure out what's going in your mini comic. For me, that means flipping through recent sketchbooks and marking pages where there's something I want to include. Then you're going to need to scan those images into your computer so you can then clean them up and edit them in the image editing software of your choice. Once your images are cleaned up, you're going to start laying out your content into pages for print. Ah, shh, I gotta explain how you do that. Okay, so, when you're making a printed book, you have to think about your pages in multiples of four, since each piece of paper, folded and double-sided, makes four pages in your book. For this particular mini-comic, I figure out that I'm going to need eight pages of hourly comics and four pages of sketches. So that's two pieces of paper for comics, one piece of paper for sketches, for a total of three pieces of paper, or 12 pages. Next you're going to make a sort of map for yourself, where you plot out where those pages are going to go in relation to each other for printing. Start by drawing out your total number of pages as sets of two like this. Each one of these divided rectangles is one side of a piece of paper. You can see when I label them that these are each representing the front and back of our three pieces of paper. Now you're going to label each of these pages by what number they are in the finished book. To do this, you're going to start with the box on the right of the first piece of paper and label that page one. From there, you're going to skip down to the left side of the next rectangle down. I like to draw little lines between them so I don't get confused. That next box is page two. Then skip down to the next rectangle back over to the right and label that page three. You keep repeating this process of alternating between the right and left boxes as you label them in numeric order until you get to the last rectangle. This is your center spread, the exact middle of your book. Here you're going to start going back up through the rectangles, so you label the right hand box with the next number in your sequence, then jump back up and to the left to continue. If you're doing the diagonal lines to keep your place, you should end up with little X's between the boxes for each piece of paper. Once you have all your pages numbered, you can go through and label them with what content appears on each page. So here I label my first four pages sketches, and then work my way through the hourly comic day pages, making sure that I keep my comic pages in order with the printed pages on the map. It's a little confusing for the first couple of times you try it, but these steps produce an accurate guide for content placement. Now that you have your map, you can go back into your image editing software of choice and place all your images into their appropriate places on each spread. Make sure that you label these files in a way that makes sense to you too, so like paper 1 side A, then paper 1 side B, or something similar. With our files all laid out, we can start printing! I like to print my cover on a piece of brightly colored cardstock using the bypass feed on my LaserJet printer. The cover is also a good place to get your local print shop to help you out with a nice full color print if you prefer. Some people even screen print their own color covers, which is rad, but way more of a process all on its own. 
I print my interior pages on heavy duty copy paper. It's a good idea to print one page first and make sure it came out okay before you print the whole run of them. Once I have the whole run on one side printed, I flip it around and put it back into the paper tray to print on the other side. The exact way you do this to get the front and back aligned is different on every printer, so you'll need to run a couple of tests with your home printer to figure out what works on your machine. Once again, I print just one to start with to be sure that everything came out correctly oriented before I send the whole stack through. Once you have all your pages printed, it's time to collate, staple, and fold. Lay everything out so that it's oriented in the same way and in order to make assembling them as easy as possible. With all your stacks nicely organized, you can go through and pick up each page in order and get all your books collated in no time. I also like to rotate each stack 90 degrees as I go so they're easy to grab off of the pile for later steps. Now you have to staple them all together. I have a fancy long-armed stapler so I don't have to awkwardly crunch my pages to reach the center. You can set it to different depths and since this book is all printed on letter-sized paper, I set it to five and a half inches to reach the exact middle. You'll also want to make sure that the cover is facing up when you do this, so that the sharp ends of the staples are on the inside of the book. Repeat this on all your copies. Finally, you're going to fold each book in half. You can get these handy little things called a bone folder at any arts and crafts store or in many places online. They're made of either real bone or plastic and can help you get a nice crisp edge. A wooden spoon will do in a pinch, but the bone folder really makes the process a lot easier. Make sure you get the edges of your book lined up and gently fold the center with your hand at first. Then come in with the bone folder and get those nice sharp creases. This is the last step to putting together your mini comic. Oh, but you still have to do it a bunch more times. comics after that you are done and you have this nice little booklet that you can give away to friends or you can sell them at conventions like I do or at not conventions like I do right now hope everybody enjoyed and I'd love to see what you end up making Oh, oh, there we go again.